Hey, everybody. Welcome to Inspire Your Success Podcast. My name is Michael Leonard, former corporate zombie turned lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm on a mission to inspire millions of people to stop settling for average and create the life that you deserve. Each week, I'll be bringing on world-class experts, entrepreneurs, and high achievers to give you the inspiration to take massive action. I'm confident these successful people will give you the spark to create an epic life and business. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Here's your episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Inspire Your Success podcast. Now, you know, my goal with this show is to bring you different guests and entrepreneurs that are living a life that isn't the normal nine to five. And I have a feeling you're really going to enjoy today's guest, Kate Smith, because she is doing the exact opposite of what most people do in their lives. Now, just imagine waking up in Bali, going to meditation, working at a coffee shop, traveling the world, working on a beach, and literally making money from your laptop. That is Kate's life. Kate is the remote nomad who has been featured in really big sites, including the Penny Hoarder, BBC, BuzzFeed, Mashable, and a lot of others. And she has basically created a life that most people dream about. She literally travels the world and makes money from her laptop. Now, she is based out of Bali, which is a digital nomad haven, and it's just really cool to learn about how she went from sitting in a cubicle, not really enjoying her life because she was yearning for those 10 days off that she got every year, and she realized that life was more that. It was, it was more than that. It was about experiences. It was about having fun. It was about creating a, a life that you didn't have to be tied down into one location, so I really love Kate's story. She has a ton of great tips on your overall well-being, your personal health, how to grow your business, how to be a freelancer, and how to make money and create that laptop lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy today's episode, and thank you so much again for being here. All right, Kate. Well, thank you so much for being here today. I'm very, very excited to uh, share your story. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So have to just get started with learning more about yourself because prior to a few years ago, I had never heard of a digital nomad. I didn't understand what that really was to a lot of people. It seemed like this unbelievable career choice where you get to travel the world and, and do great things. And so you have to take us back to, you know, how did you get started with all this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I'm in the same boat. Five years ago, I had no idea this was even a thing. It seemed like the most surreal, unrealistic, impossible thing ever. So the way it started for me is I grew up um, in Canada in a small hometown, middle class family, grew up in the whole go to school, get a job, do that. And that's life. So I went to university, got a business degree. One thing was that when I was in university, I was very clear on what I wanted. I wanted to work at a big ad agency downtown. I was very clear on what I wanted. And I graduated. I landed my dream job right away. I was working at a big ad agency as a project manager. I was living downtown in a condo in Toronto. And I remember at one point standing in my condo downtown and just thinking, this is my ultimate dream. Like I've just, I've achieved what I wanted so bad and I don't feel any happier and something doesn't feel right. And that kicked off this whole long journey. You know, I knew that just a few years in, it was just, I noticed I was working these crazy overtime hours at the ad agency to pay for this condo that I was never in because I was working crazy hours to pay for the condo. And it was just, I noticed this cycle and I remember thinking, and it's, it's kind of funny. So I remember thinking, I'm never going to get ahead because I was entry level salary. I had my student loan debt. And the big kicker for me, which is kind of bad, is that I was like, man, two weeks vacation, 10 days every year. I was like, there's no way like I need to travel away more than that. I can't do the whole 10 days a year. And that really like I really felt that. And I, I knew I couldn't do that for the rest of my life. And, I, and just reflecting on is this really the rest of like the next 60 years of my life? So What I did is I ended up going to a smaller agency, moved back home, trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? This isn't resonating. I set a criteria list for myself and it was, okay, I don't want to sit at a desk all day. I need to earn money because I have student loans to pay and I want to be able to travel. And I thought there is no way this job exists. I'm not going to get paid to travel and not sit at a desk like that. I'm ambitious, but that just seems so far fetched. But I was determined to find the closest thing aligned to that. And I started doing research. I remember thinking, sitting at my desk, 
man, if I was just a good writer, I could be a travel blogger and get paid to travel the world. In my head, the only way to make money on like make money and travel was teaching English or being this travel blogger, which seemed like the most far fetched thing ever. So I went on that journey. I started saving up money to quit my job. And then about a month before I was going to quit, I got laid off. And to me, that was a sign. You're ready. Let's do this. I was working with a life coach trying to figure out what that thing was for me. I started exploring different options. One thing that I did and that may be helpful for people listening as well is I started, you know, I had my criteria list of what I was looking for in my next job. And then I started exploring what my passions were because I was working so much that I realized I don't even know what I love. Like, how am I supposed to get a job I love if I don't even know what I love? I don't even know what my hobbies and interests are because I've just been working like crazy. So I started doing all these random things. I signed up for like sign language classes, Spanish classes, jujitsu, painting, anything, you name it. And my intent with each of these things was to figure out what I liked. So if I, for example, the painting, I signed up for painting classes, realized I don't have the patience for it. So I dropped it. I I wasn't going to push through on something that wasn't resonating because the whole point was to figure out what resonates and what doesn't. And then with the things that did resonate, It wasn't as though I wanted to be like a jiu-jitsu master. I just wanted to know what elements of jiu-jitsu resonates or doesn't resonate. So I started to learn that, you know, through the language classes, I really liked to connect with people, the jiu-jitsu and going to the gym and all of that. I really liked health. I, I valued health. So I was getting more clear on what my passions were. And I think it's important to mention even during this time. So, you know, I was unemployed, obviously could use the money and I was determined I'm not going to sit at a desk anymore. This is my criteria and I'm not going to do anything other. And there's a time where I was, you know, offered position at a different agency. And for me to land a, a job at another, like to go to like a big agency back downtown would have been no problem very easy for me to do. And I had been offered positions and I turned them down and I remained unemployed because it wasn't in line with what I was after. And and so often people, they will get distracted by that shiny thing because a new job seems exciting, right? Or another raise or a promotion. And that's what keeps people stuck in the cycle because they get you know, an extra $1,000 a year, $2,000, or they get a little promotion that keeps them stuck in the cycle. Or, you know, in my example, I was unemployed, obviously could have used the money, then I get presented with this job opportunity, it's not aligned with what I'm looking for. It's so important that all of your energy and focus goes directly to what you're trying to achieve. And if it doesn't align with that, completely drop it. And it's a no, there's no maybe it's black and white. So that's important probably for people listening as well to realize, get very clear on your goal and it's black and white, yes or no. It either helps you get to that goal and achieve that goal or it doesn't. You know, getting a job opportunity is in a way a good distraction. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it's distracting you from the ultimate goal. So... Yes. So I started exploring these passions. I I ultimately came down to three options. I was like, okay, I'm going to become a nutritionist and that should give me some flexibility. Start an interviewing nutritionist, see what their daily life was like. I was exploring teaching English abroad and I had even gone through to take my TESOL certificate. I picked a country, did all my research of what country I could go to. I was going to go to Panama, started planning all that out. And then I came across this concept of working online. The most ironic part is that I was working remotely when I graduated (laughs) university, but in my mind, it was a stay at home job. So I thought, oh, I I, I work at home. I never considered the idea of bringing my laptop to another country. I was like, oh, I have a, a work from home job, which is so ironic because then it just goes full circle back to where I started anyways. I came across this concept of working online and traveling, and I thought, incredible, because I liked my job. I just didn't like being at a desk all the time. So it was a program called Remote Year. Have you heard of Remote Year? I haven't heard of Remote Year. Okay, so Remote Year is a program that brings a group of people who work online, and it takes them to a new country every month for a year. So you have a community of like-minded people. There's a fee to join the program and they're essentially covering your accommodations flights. So you can just like go in the country, have the community, they take care of everything. So Remote Year launched its first program and a lot of people were kind of, you know, is this a scam? Because you had to pay $50 to apply. And some people, there's a lot of, you know, is this a legit thing? And I remember thinking, you know, people were like, okay, is this a scam? And I remember thinking, well, what if it's not? And what if it is real? And what if this does become, you know, my future working online? And, you know, my background was in marketing, so I knew I could get a a marketing job. Long story short, I, I didn't have success applying to remote jobs at the beginning. And I I recognize now why that was, because the way the remote world works is very different from 
the way the nine to five works. The way that you approach everything is completely different. They operate in different ways. So I I joined this program, remote year, first program. And I thought, I think it was like a $3,000 deposit to just to be a part of the program. Then it was $2,000 a month. And so I essentially put my savings on this program, booked a one-way ticket to Prague. And I was like, all right, if this program doesn't exist, it's just going to be the most expensive trip to Prague I've ever taken. If it does exist, this is going to be great. You know, months before remote year, try to find a remote job, no luck. Time comes to get on the flight. I'm like, shit, still don't have a remote job. Get on the plane anyways. I was like, all right, I'm going to figure this out. I had enough money to support myself for a month on remote year. So time was of the essence. So I get to remote year and I'm like, okay, shit. I really need to get a job (laughs) soon. And then two weeks in, my laptop dies and it breaks, completely breaks. And I remember I was in a grocery store in Prague and I just started, I started crying. I was like, man, this is it. Like I've tried so hard to make this happen. I face so much resistance. It's just like, this is not panning out. Like every sign that was like, this isn't meant to be was happening, right? Like was nothing was really panning out. I was facing a lot of resistance, which was hard for me because in a traditional environment, to be honest, it's very black and white. It's like, you want the job, do X, Y, and Z, you get the job. You want this, do X, Y, and Z. So I've always historically got what I wanted because it's it's a pattern. Just do this and you get that. But remote work was this whole new beast that I didn't know how to tackle. And I was just like, oh, this is the first time in my life where I'm trying so hard and nothing's coming. And then so I just had this thing over me and I was like, you know what? I know deep down in my heart, like, this is it. This is the thing for me. I need to work online and travel. Someone's going to hire me eventually. I know I'm very hardworking. I have a good work ethic. It's just a matter of time and I will not give up on this and I'm going to do whatever it takes. That's an important thing too to consider is that whenever you pursue something in entrepreneurship or whatever it may be, it sounds exciting and cool at the beginning, but then it gets hard. And that's where 90% of people give up. I see it time and time again. Everyone wants to work online, but as soon as they realize how much work it is, that's when they give up. Everyone loves the idea, but no one wants to do the work. So I ended up purchasing a a laptop on my credit card. I was like, I'm not giving up now. Put it on my credit card before the month was out and landed a full-time remote marketing gig with a remote company. And my journey continued. And at that time, I started my blog, The Remote Nomad. I wouldn't consider it a blog. I call it my personal brand because I by no means think I'm a writer. I just, I would say I'm more of a storyteller and I just share what I'm learning along the way. And it's so ironic because it's like, I'm making money from a blog now. And I remember back then I was like, oh, if only I'm a good writer. Like my mindset was just so off on the possibilities. So I started my blog about this lifestyle, working online, traveling, got picked up in press. Um, You know, I was traveling around the world on remote year. We did 12 countries that year around Europe, Asia, South America, and people were really interested in what I was doing and they wanted to learn how to do it for themselves as well. So then when remote year finished up, it inspired me to start a program um, to help people get started. To me, this was the most pivotal life-changing thing in my life. I went from a corporate nine to five traditional lifestyle and I completely redirected the course and path in my life. So, you know, I was on remote year for a year, but it wasn't just a one year program. It completely shifted the direction of my life. And it created a life for myself that I didn't even know was possible. It created a life that I would have only dreamed of or imagined to achieve by the time I was like 70. Like it was like the ultimate, ultimate. I'm ambitious and it was even bigger than that. And to me, it's been the most fulfilling, rewarding, impactful thing that I've ever experienced. And it showed me the possibility and coming from a middle class family where, you know, my life was very basic. Like my name's Kate Smith and that's like as basic as it gets in Canada, right? So that was just a reflection of my life, right? It was like so basic and, you know, I have, there's nothing special about me and I, I figured a way to make this a reality and it was so impactful for me and I, I want to share that with so many people. So I created a program called Why Fly Nomads, which is a program at the moment, it takes place here in Bali. We have people fly in from around the world. We take them through an intensive experience so that they can get started earning an income online, whether it's landing a remote job, freelancing, starting a business and helping them understand it all and how it works. It's this new idea that seems so far fetched. But once you understand how it works, you're like, oh man, I can, I can do this. So now what I do is, yeah, I run Wi-Fi Nomads and uh, my personal brand, The Remote Nomad. I've stepped away from the marketing to further grow the businesses. Incredible. That is yeah. so, so <laughs> inspiring. 
I know that there's so much that people can relate to on that. I think your story will literally inspire people to just think outside the box. Like you said, so many people, we just grow up with this fixed mindset. We go to college, we get a nine to five, and then we retire at 65. And I'm like you, I did not think that was going to be my life. So I think one thing that is so, so crucial in, in all this, though, is that you talk about how hard it was. So can you talk a little bit about how you were able to overcome that? Was this something that you were having some inner self-talk? Were you reading? Were you talking to people? I mean, because so many people are going to get there. They might even take the leap, try a side hustle, whatever it is. And it is hard. I found that out the hard way as well. Mm -hmm. But can you talk about how people can maybe accelerate that and uh, just keep moving forward? 100%. I think there's so many factors to this. I will be very honest with you. Like there are times For sure, I remember one very specific time, probably two or three times where I I genuinely was like, man, I think I should just like get a nine to five. Like this is really, this is really difficult. And I was, I remember I I honestly, genuinely almost just gave up on like just stopped with Wi-Fi because it takes a lot of effort to build a company and whatnot. And I remember a moment where I was just like, I, I think I'm just going to call it quits. Right. It is very difficult. I think there are many ways to help you through the difficulties. The one thing for me that became important was, I'll be honest with you, when I started Wi-Fi, I wanted to share what I had. Of course, I was very passionate about it. But at the end of the day, it came down to a financial decision. I was like, okay, I stick to a job and get paid X amount set rate. And I have my student loans to pay. It's going to take me like 500 years to pay off these loans if I continue on this path. Or I take a risk on myself and... You know, the first couple of years may not pay out, but then I have unlimited earning potential and then I can. So at first to me, it was it was a financial decision. I did the math and I was like, OK, I know I'm hardworking enough. I believe in myself. So I'd rather take a chance on myself, earn more, get rid of these debts than to just like slowly climb this remote corporate ladder. Right. Because a job is a job, whether it's remote or not. So it comes to a deeper why. So when I did it, it was a financial decision. Then when it got hard and I wanted to give up, it was oh shit, I need to do something deeper here. And then it really became about not so much a financial decision because if it's about money, you'll you'll quit. I will tell you that right now. Unless you have that deeper why driving you and that deeper purpose, that will help. So get clear on what your why is. At first, again, for me, it was a financial decision. Once the going got tough, that's when it became something deeper for me. So I think it's important to have that deep why. I think it's also important to surround yourself in the right environment and with the right people to support you. One of the reasons I was struggled so much at the beginning, even to land a remote job, is that I was trying to land a remote job in a world, an environment in Canada that was a fixed nine to five mindset. No one got it. It seemed unfathomable to work online. As soon as I started surrounding myself with the right people in the right environment, things started just happening. So I think finding the right environment and the right people, it doesn't mean you have to eliminate people from your life, but you also have to recognize, you know, who you're bringing into your life. And even to this day, I still, you know, I live in Bali right now and I miss Canada and and I want to, you know, have parts of that in my life, but I need to be very careful how much time I spend in Canada because those Fixed mindsets, those negative thought patterns are everywhere in Canada and it can easily, you slowly become that once you're there. Like I spent three months in the summer in Canada and I started to notice myself. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm changing. Like you just, you have to be very mindful. I love everyone and everything in Canada, but I need to to protect and create opportunities for myself that are going to support me. So I think, you know, you have to have a deep why, you have to have the right environment, the right people supporting you. As I said before, when we were chatting earlier, you know, Daniel as a mentor has been so crucial to my success. So I definitely think it's like, don't try to reinvent the wheel, get help from people and mentors of people that have already taken that path. Like you don't have to go the hard way and figure it out yourself. People have been there and they've done it. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just go to the people that know what works and what doesn't learn from them. And you 10 X your progress. And then I would think the other thing, the most important thing is mindset. 100%. If your mind isn't there, it doesn't matter if you know every how to and this and that, any bit of knowledge, you can learn everything there is to learn. But if your mindset isn't right, you're not going to apply any of those things that you've learned. 
So you have to be a master of your mindset. And that comes with a lot of self-work. It comes with a lot of conquering the demons inside of you that you thought you could just subconsciously push down and never address. Like I've had to, in order for my business to grow, when I'm good, my business is good. When I'm not good, my business is not good. It's a direct reflection. Entrepreneurship is a lifestyle and they're directly correlated. So, you know, there's things that I've had to address and deal with personally that I thought I could, I was like, it's a business. I just, you know, I'm, I'm hardworking. I just do the business stuff. And then I realized, shit, these inner demons are blocking me, whether it's, you know, I've had these things in the past where it's impacted like my confidence and this and that. And when you really deeply reflect, that's when you realize like shit, in order for my business to go next level, I have to address this shit that I've always thought I could push away. Definitely mindset. And whether it's, you know, having a mentor or a coach or, you know, just working through your own shit, everything from gratitude to meditation to mentors. There's so many ways to work on your mindset, just learning, awareness, books. Um, we were talking about Tom Bilu earlier, like his videos are incredible, right? You definitely have to master your mindset. I have a whole new perception now of entrepreneurs. It seems like everyone's an entrepreneur and making money and it's like, oh, whatever, right? But To be a truly successful entrepreneur, when you see those people like Tom, who, you know, he's financially and many other ways successful, you know, and I now know, having gone through the journey, that for someone to get to that point, they have to go through a lot of deep shit mentally. And for me, I have so much respect, no matter who it is, any entrepreneur, like even Ty Lopez, people have controversial opinion about him. But at the end of the day, I'm like, well, for him to get where he is, I know what he's had to go through in terms of mindset and like friggin' kudos because not a lot of people are willing to do that. So long-winded answer to, yeah, mindset is like huge, huge part. And yeah, it's something I try to dive into with people a lot. And they're like, show me the know, like give me the knowledge and the know-how. And I'm like, man, you don't get it. Like that's, that's none of it. Like it, you can learn all that stuff online. Like even my programs, I tell people, I'm like, you literally could just learn this all online. The only thing that you're, you're essentially paying for is like that community and the mindset shift. I couldn't agree to everything you said more. Yeah. I experienced so much personally and talked to so many other entrepreneurs with such similar stories. So thank you so much for sharing that. I, I know that is going to help people too, because like you said, your business is not going to grow unless you're growing. And it's it's easy before you go in to think that it's, you can be you and you're going to make a hundred thousand a month, but you don't have to change. And that's uh quickly to figure out that is not the case. Mm-hmm. So thank you for doing that and sharing so many different rituals. Is there anything that you try and do on a daily basis? I know you talked a little bit about meditation, gratitude, anything else? hundred percent. So what I do is I remember when I started my business, I always thought working on my business. When I first started, I was hung up on the idea. I need to work eight hours on my business and it needs to be work, work. And what I've come to realize in time is that it's not about working eight hours. And I've come to realize that it's not about the work, work. There are like another 50 to 70, whatever percent it is impacts my business. So for example, me eating healthy, me going to the gym, me taking time to meditate and doing all those things that doesn't seem like work. And this is actually a great question. Someone asked me the other day, how many hours do you work a day? And I was like, okay, in terms of like work, work, like sitting at my computer, hammering things out, maybe not a lot, but I also consider taking time for education, taking time to read books, to learn, taking courses, going to the gym, those all impact my state and how I show up. And that impacts my business. So to me, okay, in an indirect way, to me, going to the gym is just as important as putting my head down into work because they both impact my business. No, that's great. I, I love oh, just I, some of the daily daily habits. And yeah. like you said, it sounds like you have a lot of them. Do you have any specific yeah. morning or evening routines that you try yeah. and do? Absolutely. So I every morning, I'll meditate for 20 minutes. I do gratitude. I find gratitude. Meditation has helped me remain present and when things get rough I can more easily bounce back when I'm meditating and more grounded I do gratitude every day that's helped rewire my brain to that growth mindset thinking positive versus negative I also list every morning how I want to show up that day so how do I want to show up today in the world my biggest priority for that day those are like the main things and then yeah so that's like that's my essentially my morning routine and then I make sure I go to the gym every other day. That's really important for me. And yeah, I would say those are the biggest things. Um, Anything at night at all before you wind down? 
No, to be honest, nope. <laughs> if I'm honest, like, no, I will like the thing with me is like, I need to completely shut off my brain and just like relax for an hour or two before I go to sleep. And I wish I could tell you something inspirational, but it's like put on Netflix, relax, go for dinner with friends. Yeah, it's, it's Perfect. nothing. But my mornings, I've, I think the big thing actually to, to take away is that everyone needs to realize they work in a different way. For me, I'm a morning person. I know I operate best and I'm on point in the morning. My mornings are sacred to me. I can't give up that space for like give away that space for my morning routine. People need to find what works best for them, right? Like for me, I know I need to work at two different locations a day. I know I need to either go to the gym at the end of the day or midday to break up my day. And I think it's important that people try and experiment with these different approaches. Because I have successful friends where, you know, online, everyone's like, get up at 5 a.m. and this and that, right? I have mentors and friends that get up at like 9 or 10. And they're like, look, I'd rather be rested get really productive work done for two hours, then get up super early, be tired and and kind of not be at like operating at 50%. So I think it ultimately comes down to you need to test out different approaches, be open to all the approaches, test them and see what works best for you. Perfect. I couldn't agree more. You got to figure it out and try different things on your own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When it comes to self-awareness, I feel like you have spent a lot of work on yourself. You have, obviously that has worked in your own life. It's helped in your business. We talked about some habits people can do. And I think I was just kind of figuring out like, what was that like when you told your friends or family, like, Hey, this is my life. Like I'm not going to live in Canada anymore because I think that most people would never really feel confident with that because they haven't put in the work like you might have. So can you talk a little bit about how that was when you, you know, initially told people? People, or was that a transition from the remote year directly into it? <clears throat> well, when I went on remote year, that on its own was this whole, like, what the hell is this program that you're going on? To be honest, I got to the point where I was this, growing up, I was like more of this shy, timid girl, not doing anything crazy. And as I got older, I started doing like the most random things. And I was pushing my limits to see what was possible. You know, like, random things out there. When I was trying to get creative of like, okay, how can I pay off these loans? I I just entered my entry level job. The pay is shit. I've got bills to pay. So I applied for a reality TV show because I could win 5k. And I was like, sweet. I want, I mean, it's a easy, like a way to make $5,000 quick. So I applied and I was like, okay, well just apply, see what happens. And then next thing you know, I'm on this reality show and I ended up winning $6,000. So, you know, I started, and, and these things started small, right? Like it was, just like random stuff. Like I would start doing just random things in life. Right. Or I try like on a smaller scale. I remember calling into the radio, trying to win Justin Bieber tickets. I call and they're like, Oh no, you're not the right caller. And I was like, damn, call back. And they're like, Oh yeah, you're the right caller. I was like, sweet. You know? So I think you, it's with building your confidence and, and, and I share this because I want to share this with people listening is that it's about doing those little things and having those small wins, most people think, what's the point of calling in the radio? I'm not going to win the tickets. But guess what? When I called in at 10 o'clock at night, everyone was thinking that, which is why I called twice and ended up winning them, right? And when you do those little things and you get those small wins and you those feats, it builds your confidence. And you're like, oh, shit, well, well, I'll try this and I'll try this. And then it builds your confidence. But I think to answer your question, when I shared this whole working online thing with my family, they're just like, oh, God, what's next? Like, Because I had been on like this reality TV show did like this music video thing, like all this random shit. Like I, they just knew I was like the most random person. And it's just like, what are you coming at with us now? Right. So I think it's like doing those little things to build your confidence, to know the possibility. Again, I just started doing so much random shit that they're just like not phased by anything I say to them now. Right. Like it's like, Oh, it's now. So yeah, I think my my journey was well received. I still don't know that my parents understand what I do for a living. <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap their head around that, but they're very supportive, um, and I'm lucky. And you know, even my brother and I live very different lives. He's like the most traditional lifestyle you can imagine. I'm the opposite, but we have such respect. And you know, as I'm accomplishing these things, he's just so you know, like good job. Like you know, he's really nice and supportive of like you know supporting me on like whether it's good or bad, he's like, Oh, no, it's good. You just like just keep going or, you know, congrats. And we have a lot of respect because entrepreneurship isn't like, it's this cool thing right now. Let's be real, right. But at the end of the day, if nine to five desk, for some people, that's what they want, right. And if that's what you truly want, 
and I'm not saying don't trick yourself into thinking that's what you, if, if that's what you want, do that. If entrepreneur is what you want, do that. Like don't do anything based on society. I don't do entrepreneurship to be in this cool bracket of like entrepreneurs. I do it because it's, it's what I want to do. I live in Bali because I want to live here. I don't live here to be like, oh, I'm so cool to live in Bali, right? Like you have to do what resonates and aligns with you. And some people, I think their mindset is, oh, I'm fine in this nine to five. And really they're like, nah, I fucking hate this. But you know, if some people, they, they want to raise families, that's what they want to do. Like you just have to be true to yourself and like screw what society thinks, what other people think and just live your truth. I love that so much. And I completely uh, hear you on the family, not understanding what you're doing. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you think of maybe some ideas for people to get started with making money online? Because to me, when I made my first dollar on Google AdSense, I felt like that was the most rewarding dollar I'd, I'd ever earned. And <laughs> so I would love to know, because I think when people, like you said, get the little things, the little wins create confidence, confidence creates big decisions, big wins, and you can really just keep the momentum going. So what are some ways yeah. you think people can get a quick win with starting if they worked in the nine to five their whole life and they yeah. you know, are curious about making money online? I love that you asked this because I think there's a lot of barriers people put upon themselves that stop them from getting started. I will say right now that in terms of making money online, like freelance is the easiest, quickest way to get in. You can easily just get a client on the side of your nine to five, build that up. People like freelancers because they don't have to commit to an employee. A lot of people go from nine to five to online thinking, oh, I'll just apply for an online job. 80 to 90 percent of online jobs aren't even posted online. So when you do apply for a remote job, you're competing against so many people. You're ego is going to get blown. It's going to be frustrating. You should be reaching out to companies, creating those opportunities, always providing value. And better yet, freelancing is, is an even better approach. A lot of people think they need to be very techy to make money online. Oh, I have to be a developer or a designer. That could not be further from the truth. Another big thing is that people get hung up on, oh, my background is this. So I need to make money online doing that. I think people completely underestimate that you can make money doing something you love and that you're passionate about. I was always into personal and professional development. I never thought I'm ambitious, but I never could fathom the idea of making money doing that for a living. And that's what I do for a living now. So I think people underestimate, they focus so much on their professional skill set, but it's like, what are you passionate about? Like, if you are like an animal person, I use my one friend as a reference all the time. She's like the go-to person if you need anything related to animals, like any questions, whatever it is. And so often people disregard those things because it's their passion or because, oh, no one would pay for that. People will pay for it. Like you will be so surprised what people pay for. So don't think you need to be this technical person. Do something that you're passionate about. Like I'm telling you, people feel your passion and that will sell and make you money. In terms of a quick win, though, when someone's starting out with freelancing, like I'm working with a girl right now and she's going to get into coaching, funnels are like this magical thing. So when I started building my brand, I spent a year building my brand and I felt very busy building this brand. I was always posting on social media. And then at the end of the year, I thought, oh, my God, I have not made a single penny from this blog and it has consumed so much time. And then I realized, OK, I haven't been giving people the opportunity to buy from me, even like a five dollar download or whatever. The magical thing about funnels is that you can do like a Facebook ad to a free offer to an email sequence to a sale. Even if it's a five dollar sale or whether it's a coaching call, whatever it may be, you don't need to have a huge audience. You just need to be able to get someone on the phone, connect with them and be able to sell. And I use that word loosely because you're not selling to people. You're just sharing with them the value you can provide. I've struggled with sales in, in the past. When I first started, I hated sales. And then I developed that skill. And it's really about learning how to ask the right questions and finding the people that are a fit. Like you're not there to sell your idea to someone. You're there to share the value that you can provide someone. I would say like in terms of a quick win, like get a freelancing client, understand how to properly reach out to clients. A lot of people are like, hey, I do marketing. Do you want to hire me? Don't use that approach. Make it all about adding value. Make it about them. 
hey, I see, you know, you have a blog, but you're not really writing on it. And, you know, here's why blogs are important. And here's how it can help your bottom line business. I've put together some topic ideas that perform well on SEO. Feel free to write some blogs about that. Maybe that will help you. I've had students of mine and clients use this approach where they're coming from a value, like making it all about the client instead of them. And the results and impact and responses have been incredible. People freak out and freeze because they become so desperate for a remote job that they're, they completely undercut their value. They cut their prices. Do not, um, do not get on Upwork and get paid five bucks an hour. Like I'm telling you, like, no, that should not be the case. People think they're not going to make, they take these, they're like, okay, I'm going to teach English online and get paid like 15 bucks an hour. Do not do that. I don't care how desperate you are for a remote job. The worst thing that you can do is get started in undercutting your prices. You're not ever going to get ahead. It will cause stress. So it's like, get in when you're getting into this space. It's like, you really have to, to charge your, your worth as well. Perfect. I, I love that. Like you said, the value, 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 that is something that people hopefully can take away because yes. people are always needing content online and freelancing is a great bridge from mm -hmm. the uh, the nine to five to get started. And yeah. I love that you said that you don't need tech experience because mm -hmm. that is a huge belief that I've talked to so many people about. I can't start a blog. I don't know how to podcast, whatever it is. And yeah. it's it's totally true. Yeah. Like I remember being, oh, I wish I was a, a good writer, then I could be a blogger. And then I just viewed my blog as a way for me to just share and storytell. And with that mindset shift, it's like, holy crap, I guess I'm technically a blogger in some way. But it's it's really that, yeah, mindset comes back again to mindset perception. Perfect. And you talked a little bit at the beginning about it before I asked my last question. Just want to make sure mm -hmm. people know where to find you. I'm going to link to everything in the show notes as well. But yeah, if you want to talk a little bit more about your website, what you're doing there, or what's the best way people can follow you online. Cool. Yeah. So um, my personal brand is The Remote Nomad. I'm mostly active on Instagram these days. Um, there's the blog, obviously, theremotenomad.com. But if you just search that on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you'll find me, the company that I run is called Wi-Fi Nomad. So it's an immersive five-day experience here in Bali, series of workshops, very action focused. I'm, I'm really about, I don't want to just like motivate people. It's like, let's actually make this happen. So it's very focused on taking action. So Wi-Fi is W-I-F-L-Y. The idea there is that you're flying around the world chasing the Wi-Fi to work. So you can just, yeah, look up Wi-Fi. There's the, the website, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. But um I'm most active again, yeah, on Instagram, the remote nomad posting stories of what I'm up to is probably the best spot. And it is fun to follow. I love my <laughs> life. Can you talk a little bit uh, before the last question too about what people would experience if they came to an event like that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess I should explain. So like with the remote nomad, that's my personal brand stuff going on with that. In terms of listeners, there's I have an online course and they do coaching. With Wi-Fi Nomads, it's really for people who they, you know, there's so much information online and it can become very overwhelming and it's hard to know where to start and what order to do things. Oftentimes people are doing step like 10 before step one. So it really helps you create this really clear action plan and start taking action on that plan to make working online a reality. So we take people's existing skill sets, their passions, their interests, and we find what's the best fit for them. So, okay, is it best for them to start freelancing? Is it best for them to start a business? And we have all these resources and worksheets so that the idea is that when participants come, they can implement what they're, what they're learning as fast as possible. So it's like, okay, you want a business? Boom. Here's the framework. Do this. Boom. How do we, like, this is how a funnel works. Let's get your funnel set up and get going on this. So the idea is to really have you know, obviously the knowledge and guidance and I've walked the path and, you know, sharing that with participants, um, but giving them just the clarity of like, what can I do online? How do I fit into this? They know it's a reality, but it's like, well, where do I fit into this? Like, what can I really do online? So it's helping them get that clarity of what they can do, giving them this specific action step. So every participant leaves with a specific action plan of this is exactly what I need to do, how I need to do it to make this a reality. And then the community support. So beyond the program, there's the community is very close. So you have that support and community, you know, even after the program ends. The hardest part is when the program does end, right? Because then you're back in the real world. We have some participants that quit their job 
join all in. We have some that are like, okay, I'm in my nine to five. I want to come figure this out, see what it's all about, go back, start implementing that, and then have an exit plan to leave my corporate job. So I think the biggest thing is like, obviously at the end of the day, it's helping people get started earning an income online. My ultimate mission is to help people achieve more freedom and fulfillment in life. I don't want to just have someone trade a nine to five job for a remote job because at the end of the day, a job's a job. I want to help people live more life. There's life to live. You can do make money and do something you love and something that fulfills you. So my purpose, my whole purpose is helping people realize and achieve that freedom and fulfillment in life. The way I do that now and and show people to get down that path is through working online, working remotely. There may be ways in the future that I share that information in other ways, but for me, it's I want people to achieve that for themselves and I, I share that with them by showing them how to work remotely. That is incredible. I absolutely love the freedom and fulfillment. I think that's a phenomenal mission that you have. And I will definitely uh, include a lot of information on that for people to learn more. That sounds like an awesome opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. So for my last question, I always, we've talked about so many awesome strategies. We've had some tactics. What do you think is something that someone can do right now, like today, or if they're listening at night, like first thing in the morning to actually start taking action? Because we talked about it already. Confidence, you know, really creates that momentum. So what's something you think someone can do to start creating the life that they really deserve? They need to start taking action. People will over plan. They will take every course under the sun to validate themselves. People think that planning and researching is helping them get ahead and maybe to a degree, but oftentimes we waste a lot of time doing that and it's just, just do it, take action. Like if you're going to quit your job, pick a quit date and that's the date. So many people are so wishy-washy. Oh, at some point. And it's like, no, pick a date. When are you going to quit? Okay. Do you need to save up money? How much? Start saving up that money. Even in the smallest actions, you're putting it out there to the universe or whatever it is that this is your intent, right? So, you know, I have a a girl I'm working with right now and coaching her and, you know, she's paid for remote year to join this program. She's not working remotely yet, but she's like, she's taking those steps to put it out there of like, okay, this is the motion I'm I'm moving towards. You've got to, you've got to get specific. Like you got to have those, like those targets and stick to them. Like I'm quitting my job at this state. Like that's the end all be all. And just take action like so many people just sit there and they they are like oh what's this job I'm gonna do and it's like you can't just dream up a business idea you have to step into it you have to start doing things like I couldn't have sat in Canada thinking oh I want to start an educational travel company that would have been the most far-fetched thing I had to step into it okay I started exploring my passions and that led me to working online and doing marketing which led to my business like my personal brand which then led to the business so you can't just sit on an idea of like, what's that job I want and try to chase it. You have to step into it. So start stepping into it in any way that you can. Fantastic. I love that. I have to take massive and consistent action. That is a great answer. Yeah. Thank you consistent. so, so much for, for being here today. I really, really appreciate all your amazing answers. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's been good sharing yeah. this with everybody and chatting. Great. Well, thank you so much. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode as much as I did. I want to say thank you again to Kate. It was really cool to have the uh, podcast interview with someone that was halfway around the world and creating a life that really just wasn't possible 15 or 20 years ago. So I want you guys to realize that anything's possible with the internet, whether you're creating apps or doing stuff online or being a freelancer. The opportunities are endless, so don't feel like you have to be tied down anymore. We're living in a generation where millionaires are 16 years old sometimes and people that are 60 still don't know how to open a PDF. So you just have to realize that we're living in a pretty cool time. You can make money. You just have to be resourceful. You have to figure out what you're trying to do. And there's three really big lessons that I got from Kate. And the first thing is is self-care and having routines. So she talks a lot about doing meditation and exercise and eating healthy and really has an empowering morning routine. So make sure that you have something set up uh, for that in your life just to have some structure in your day and to take care of yourself because the more you can take care of yourself, the better you're going to show up for your family, your friends, your job, your business, and everything else. So I'll link to some resources in the show notes on that because I do love a good morning routine. 
The second thing I want you to remember is that travel is not a reward. It is necessary. It's part of life. It's how you can experience cultures. It's how you can figure out what you want in life, what you don't want. And it's really just about creating memories. It's about creating experiences. So instead of buying something else on Amazon, spend some money and see if you can save up and get out uh, get out of town, go on a vacation, make a memory with someone because those are going to last a hell of a lot longer than something that you buy on Amazon. And lastly, I want you to remember that you just need to get started. If you haven't started an online business or a side hustle or a freelancing business at all, just start. She talks so much about that, how people take all these courses, and I'm guilty of this too sometimes, but they don't take action. So you need to figure out how you can get out of your comfort zone, take a little bit of action, and just start making your first dollar online. Figure out what you can do because I know that you have skills that can be monetized and there's so many many ways to do it. So just get started. Now, if you want to learn more about Kate, make sure to check out the show notes as I link to her website or Instagram and her community, the Wi-Fi Nomad. So Kate, thank you so much again for being on the show. I am super inspired. I love what you're doing and continue to do. And so thank you again, everybody that's listening. I appreciate you guys so much for being here and I hope you have an epic day. Thanks for listening to Inspire Your Success Podcast with Michael Leonard. If you like this show and want to learn more, check out inspireyoursuccess.com slash podcast. Also, please leave us a review on iTunes to let us know how we're doing. Join us next week for more tips and tools to help you create the life you deserve.